Okay, here we go again. Today I'm going to make an additive synthesizer using harmonics. Uh, this is a pretty cool patch that uh, sounds really interesting, I think. Um, so what is an additive synthesizer? Well, an additive synthesizer is anything that uses the addition of simple sinusoidal components or uh, other simple sounds such as uh, sawtooth waves or um, triangular waves or square waves to create more complex timbres. And uh, we're going to make one built on the naturally occurring harmonic series. Okay, so uh, we'll, of course, be using cycle objects. And we'll have an easy DAC. Uh, but we're going to have eight of these. So there's a nice way you can uh, quickly duplicate and space objects is by command D, which is to duplicate, move it over. And then when you command D again, it will preserve that spacing, which is pretty cool. Now I've got a very nice set of eight cycle objects. So each one of these is going to have a different frequency and a different amplitude. Uh, and they're all going to be set to the harmonic series. So the first thing we need is the fundamental frequency, uh, which I will make as a big, nice big integer box here. And I'm going to get I'm in the inspector here. I'm going to make that nice and big. Make that 32 point aerial bold. And I'm going to put a little comment box to it, which is key press C, which says fundamental frequency in hits. Okay, so this will drive the frequency of our first cycle object. This is the first harmonic, if you like. Now this is the second harmonic, this is the third harmonic, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. And you remember to derive the frequencies of the harmonics, you just multiply by the harmonic number. So this is simply multiply by two. And we can duplicate, move that over there, and then continue that duplication. Okay, and we need to change these, of course, to multiply by three, multiply by four, Multiply by 5, multiply by 6, multiply by 7, and multiply by 8. And hook those all up. Now there's a great little hooking up shortcut that I'm going to show you. So I'm dragging a patch cord at the moment. Before I let go, I'm just going to hold down the shift key now. Okay, I'm holding it down. Keep it held down. When I hook it up there and let go, it immediately gives me another one, so I can just click through these super fast and bang, they're all done. And oh, I've got a spare one here, and I don't want, I can just hit the escape key at this point to get rid of that. Okay, look at these. Now, I want to select all of these and make them segmented patch cords, so I'm going to option drag through them and then command shift Y. You'll get used to these keyboard shortcuts. And look at that, oh, beautiful. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, let's connect all of these up. I'm afraid I don't know a shortcut to connect all of these up. We just have to do it manually. There may well be one that I haven't learnt yet. Okay, great. Look at these. Some of these patch cords are a bit skew with. Let's make those nice and straight. I like tidy patches. Okay, now we could simply um, put these all in and Bob will be your uncle, but we don't yet have any amplitude gains. So let's put those in member multiplier. Let's make that, I don't know, 0.2 to start with. And then duplicate. Duplicate, 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 duplicate. Uh, let's make these progressively smaller, 0.1, no, 0.05, 0.0, 0.05, 0.05, 0.05, 0.05. Two, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, 0 0.003, something like that. I don't know. Hook those all up. all up. 
let's hook these all up to a plus, shall we? Uh, actually, let's do that trick. I can actually drag from the inlet up to the outlet and hold down the shift. And that makes it super fast. And again, option, click all of those and command shift Y. Beautiful. Make these look nice. And then let's put that into the left and right speakers. And then uh, set that to 440, uh, no, not 440, um, I don't know, something a little lower, 200. Switch on. And there we go, there's an additive synthesizer now. That's eight sine waves. Uh, let's make this a little bit cooler. Let's get that case lighter in that we had before. And an MTOF. Ready to frequency. And now we've got a synthesizer we can drive. I also want that uh, line object as well. So let's get rid of those. So I want the multiply tilde and the line tilde object, if you remember those from the previous screencast. Connect those up. So I'm getting a little bit out of running out of room here. Uh, and we were going to do from 0 up to 0 point, actually we probably don't need to be, it can be 1 now because we've already done this pre-gain uh, here. Uh, and we'll do that over 50 milliseconds and then back down to 0 over 750 milliseconds. And uh, in theory I should really do a trigger bang, but I can't be bothered for now. That's pretty cool. Um, and just finally, one other thing I'm going to do is make a special interface for controlling the relative gain. So you can see we've got 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.03, 0.02, etc. Uh, I'm going to make a nifty little interface to deal with these, and that's called the multi slider. If I can spell it correctly, multi slider. Okay, looks completely unassuming at the moment. This allows you to have multiple sliders in a single interface. Now, at the moment, there's only one slider in there, which you can see if I click up and down, it's just one big bar which looks awful but let's make it eight sliders so go down to the bottom and ask you how many sliders do you want there we want eight and we want the range to go from zero up to one so this is going to be these are going to be individual gains uh, now if we click on that whoa, multiple sliders we like but the other thing is to make it even cooler is go down to the bottom, slider style thin line, no, we want bars, and we want some candy cane colors, so go up to the top, alternating candy cane colors, eight. Whoa, now that's cool, okay, now that's not doing anything at the moment. What is that doing? Uh, it's always quite useful to use a little message box to find out what is actually being spit out, so you connect the outlet to the right hand inlet of a message box, and click on that and you see all it's doing is just outputting floating point numbers but it doesn't output them until I let go of the mouse which is a bit silly I want to be able to change them as I go uh, if you go down to the bottom if, on the inspector here you click continuous data output that means as you click and drag it's sending out data so lock and now as we click and drag you can see those values changing it's just a list of floating point numbers from 0 to 1. Okay, so how do I get them going into here? 
it's very simple. I use something called the unpack object, which I'll talk more about in a future lecture. But basically, it allows you to unpack those list elements into individual outlets. We've got eight of them, right? So we need eight floating points. Uh, let's make a bit of room. So this takes a list of floating points in, and it's going to spit each one out in individual outlets. So there's the first one. Here's the second one, third one, uh, there, the fourth one goes to there, the fifth one to there, the sixth one to there, the seventh one to there, and the last one goes to there. And now, I turn my, I can hit these and it will actually, it's rescaling the gains of these. Oh, no, sorry, I put them into the wrong place. I'm sure you were laughing at me as I did that. I put them into the phase inlet of cycle. I want them to go into the multiply tilde. That's where I want them to go. So I need to unhook all of these and put them in the right object. That's what happens when you do live screencast, folk. You make mistakes and it's recorded for posterity. I was wondering why that was making no difference whatsoever. Alrighty. This time we should be in business. to make that 0.2 now, seeing as I'm So, that's making, this is the first time, the gain of the first harmonic here and the gain of the eighth harmonic up there and as I make a line going out that way it makes a much more nasal timbre as I go the other way, it's a much more mellow time. If I drop out every second one, I'll end up with a clarinet sound. If I have a very strong third harmonic, I'm going to sound a bit like an oboe or a trumpet. Add a pinch. So that's pretty cool. We've got an additive synthesis uh, engine here with some funky color graphics here. A nice uh, bit of converting from MIDI to frequency. We're doing gain scaling here, which is run by this uh, slider here, and we're doing enveloping as well. So pat yourself on the back. That's quite a lot of uh, pretty advanced max chops in there. So I hope you have fun with that. Um, feel free to do other cool things with this. You might want to put in uh, some kind of weird frequency sliding or something like that. Uh, whenever you click one of the keys up here, or uh, if you have a MIDI um, keyboard at home, you might try the note in object, which would produce the MIDI notes here from an external keyboard. So have fun with that, and uh, we'll see you next week.